Ah, uh, hey, uh... <laughs> so, um... We're back at the, uh... End of stage 3 again. Um... And, uh... <laughs> the, uh... My computer didn't actually record anything after stage 3, which is weird. But, uh, fortunately I managed to, uh, save a replay just in case. Uh, so... Um, you can still watch the rest of the... The replay, it's just that, uh... Whatever I was saying is lost. I never got recorded, apparently. Um, so yeah, I'm just, uh, joined the, uh, replay now for the, the rest of the, the playthrough. This is the playthrough that I was just going through showing, um, so stage four, um, <coughs> stage four is when it starts to, uh, give me real problems. Um, the stage itself is not as bad as, uh, in, as stage four in Perfect Cherry Blossom. Um, but, uh, the boss is, uh, fairly tricky. Um, so yeah, the, uh, <coughs> the whole, uh, idea behind the, uh, the incident of this game is that the, uh, something happened to the moon and we froze the night, um, to investigate it, uh, to basically give ourselves more time. But, uh, aside from Kane and, uh, ourselves and the villains, um, yeah, I kind of walled myself here and had the bomb. Uh, nobody else actually seems to know that something's wrong with the moon, and everyone else either doesn't care or <laughs> about the incident or thinks the incident is the unending night that we are causing. Uh, and here comes Marissa to investigate the, uh, endless night, and, uh, she's got <laughs> restless leg syndrome there on her sprite. It's kind of silly. Um, yeah, so, uh, hopefully you can read this, uh, replay mode kind of speeds up the, uh, the text, so the sprites are going kind of crazy. Um, but hopefully you still have enough time to read that, uh, you might have to pause if you want to actually read some of this. Yeah, it's definitely being sped up, um, sorry about that. I uh, was not anticipating having to show this on replay. Uh, Marissa! Her non-spells are hard, uh, because those stars move really erratically, so they're difficult to read. And I actually got through the first one without bombing. I usually do bomb that. Um, this is capturable, but, uh, I like to bomb it to be safe, just because I don't want to end up death bombing and wasting two bombs. So yeah, I bomb there, for safety. Um... <coughs> Yeah, obviously if you play as Marissa, um, it would be weird to have Marissa as a boss fight. So what actually happens, um, and this is a tradition in Toho games, is that your stage 4 fight depends on your player character. This is a tough non spell. That part where I went through that blue wall is the hardest part. Um, but I actually made both of her non spells uh, from the mid boss fight uh, without bombing, which is really good. Um, and this spell is, uh, kind of annoying because, well, it's not be I just got hit there because I was playing badly. Uh, but the stars come around and they can spawn right on top of you. And, uh, that's the most annoying part. But the I just got hit because I didn't see a bullet coming at me. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, for example, perfect- that was a mistake. Um, Perfect Cherry- I gotta wait for it. Perfect Cherry Blossom, you face a different Prism River Sister at the beginning, depending on which player you're using. Yeah, I kinda wasted a bomb there. That wasn't played very well, but that's okay. Um, in this game- oh, in Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, Patchouli has different spell cards depending on who you play. In this game, for Stage 4, you face Marissa if you play as Raimu and Yukari, or as, um, uh, Yuyuko and Yomu. They face Marissa. But if you play as Marissa, you don't face Marissa. Um, you face Raimu if you play as Marissa and Alice. Or if you play as, uh, Sakuya and Emilia, you face Raimu, I believe. So that's a completely different fight, uh, with completely different music. It's it's actually a pretty fun fight, but um, I've barely done it because I very much prefer the uh, border team on this. Um, 
Each of the teams in this game, I don't think I've really talked about that, each of the teams has uh, their own special characteristics. Um, as usual, Reimu has the smallest hitbox. Um, I think that's standard for everything after Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. I think Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, she and, Reimu, or she and Rose have the same hitbox, but uh, yeah. Um, and they have a longer death bomb time, basically, I think. Uh, this spell is ridiculously hard for me. Um, it's... It can easily drain your resources quickly if you you don't play it well, and I did not play it well. But, um, I planned some bombs there and at least, you know, got through it just bombing. And I'm also really bad at this. Um, I didn't do this right at all, but, uh, I'm basically just trying to conserve resources and not have a disaster, because it's going pretty well so far. Um, yeah, uh, Marissa and Alice, uh, Marissa has the, uh, usually has the best item collecting, and, uh, that's the case here, too. And, uh, they also have the Malice Cannon, but they're not supposed to, so I don't think you can really count that. Um... Let's see, uh, Sakuya and Romelia get, um, some weird bomb stuff. Like, uh, if you get hit with a bomb in stock, you get an extra bomb item drop, so you can, uh, get an extra bomb. Um, Yuko and Yomu have something similar, where if you beat a stage with less than three bombs in stock, they give you an extra one. Um, so if you get to the end of the stage and you have three bombs, uh, you might as well just use one because it's free. Um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, Yomu also has some weird stuff with her Phantom Gauge, because she's half ghost. Um, so her, her uh, gauge only goes to negative 50, um, which makes it easier to get to the, uh, her time collecting uh, region, because you only have to get to negative 30 instead of negative 80. Um, they also have a weird thing where Yomu has the focus shots and, uh, Yuyuko has the spread shots, even though Yuyuko still has the focus movement. So that's kind of weird. That you have to use, uh, unfocus speed, which with Yomu is really fast. Uh, this, um, to, uh, this is a difficult, uh, mid-boss. This is Te, uh, Te Inaba. Um, the strategy is basically, uh, just if you have a bomb, use it. Um, you can get through each of these non-spells with one bomb, but, uh, I only had one, so I could only use it on one. And then it's a hit, uh... Yeah, these, they're very difficult, um, if you can't deal with crossing patterns. Uh, this part is just streaming, um... It looks like the earlier part where they all send bullets out everywhere, but, uh, after the bullets go out, they focus in on you, so you can misdirect them, kind of. Um, I didn't do a great job of it, but it worked. And now, you really want to memorize where these death fairies are going to uh, appear. So you start the center, then you go right. Um, whereas earlier, you start in the center and go left, and then right. Uh, this one, you go center, right, left, center. And you really want to be in the center when these things come down, because you can kill them pretty quickly. But if you don't start under them, they uh, become a huge problem. Uh, so now we're to the boss. Uh, this is Raisin. Uh, she's a rabbit from the moon. Uh, Tay was also a rabbit, but she was not from the moon. She's from the earth. Um, so these are the people behind the uh, moon incident. Uh, they have uh, hidden the true full moon, uh, and replaced it with a fake one, uh, to seal away, uh, basically seal off the path from the earth to the moon, and, uh, from the moon to the earth. <coughs> uh, that was Erin, uh, she, oh, the other thing is, this game has two stage sixes, it has two stage fours and two stage sixes, it's weird. Um, and the first stage six, Erin is the boss. Uh, the second stage six, she is the mid boss, but not the boss boss. The boss boss. Uh, but we'll get to that. No, we'll get to stage four, I guess. Uh, racing gives me a lot of trouble. Some people find her easy, but um, her non spells can 
I can't. This, there's a way to do this safely, but I can't do it. I always screw it up. Um, plus, it's not really made for uh, Yukari to be able to hit from the safest path. Uh, so I just always bomb there. Um, you get a lot of bombs, though. I think I had five bombs coming into this fight. And so I kind of wanted to use them on these non-spells, because I tend to get clipped by them. And I, the last thing I want is to waste a full stock of bombs. Um, but I actually did pretty well on the non-spells on this stage. Um, yeah. Here yeah, I bombed even though I was actually safe. Uh, but, you know, that's fine. Bomb to be safe. Which is too bad, because I think I would have captured this if I had just, you know, tapped that one out. Yeah. Um, but, uh, that's okay. Yeah, do not chase that. Don't worry about chasing point items with, uh, it's racing. At least not with uh, the border team, because uh, Rainbow is not really very fast. Uh, basically, you do not want to be anywhere anywhere up the screen when uh, the non-spell starts, because if you get caught up there, it's just crazy hectic. Um, I'm just going to bomb this, because I have a lot of resources. Um, this is a really difficult spell for me. Um, I have captured it in spell practice mode, but, um, yeah, I don't want to worry about it when I have three bombs in stock. <coughs> uh, let's see, and then this is her final spell. This is one time you can't actually worry about going and getting the items before this, because there's no non-spell between the last two spells. But, see, I get caught out too far, and I'm not actually hitting her. I'm barely hitting her at all here. So, um, yeah, I made a mistake, and I tried to get back to the center, but couldn't get back to a, a safe latitude. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we actually got the, uh, time or the uh, bonus, which I usually don't, because I usually get hit a lot more than that. But I actually did a really good job of using my bombs this time, and I did a good job of, uh, not getting hit on the non-spells, too. So, see, you get a choice. Final A is you go to A and, and uh, you can't unlock extra or get the good ending in Final A. Um, earlier I mentioned that you can uh, continue up until 5 o'clock. That is true if you go to Final A. Final B, you cannot continue. If you continue before you finish stage 5, you can't even enter Final B. Um, and you, once you enter Final B, you can no longer continue either. So you have to 1cc to get... Uh, yeah, the... That's an auto bomb for me, those death fairies, but I didn't have a bomb, so. Um, stage 6 is pretty simple. It's basically just made to give you a bunch of point items um, so that you can get your extra lives uh, filled up. Um, it can be a little tricky if they spread these, uh, these bunnies out. They put three bunnies out uh, at random places, and then they have a ton of familiars, and they explode into a ton of point items. If the bunnies clump up like this, they're really easy to deal with. If they put them on different ends of the screen, they're, uh, they can get pretty difficult. Um, but uh, fortunately, this went pretty well. So now we are to Erin. She is the uh, uh, a mid boss. Um, and uh, she, like Rayson, is from the moon, as is the the uh, final boss, and I really thought I was clear there, but I wasn't. Um, I should have bombed. I should have just auto-bombed this, but I thought I was in the clear there. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and then I'm just gonna bomb this automatically. Uh, basically because I have a lot of resources and I don't want to waste them. Uh, this one, you get attacked by bullets from all sides, so it is easy-ish to get ambushed. Um, Stuff is aimed though, so I think you can misdirect it if you really, um, learn how to do it. Okay, so, and here's the final boss, Kaguya. Uh, Kaguya Fly-san. Uh, she is, um, actually a character from classical Japanese literature. Um, if you're familiar with, uh, the story, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, I believe it is? Um, it's one of the oldest known science fiction stories in, uh, 
and uh, my screensaver just went on. I'm not sure how that affected the recording, and I'm not. This is uh, the window's doing something strange, so I hope that's okay too. Uh, whatever. So, um, yeah, part of uh, her story is uh, well, she's a princess from the moon, and uh, she comes to Earth, and uh, yeah. The story in Toho is that she was banished from the moon because uh, she ingested a forbidden elixir that grants immortality. Um, and I'm not sure how much that is uh, true in the story or not. But uh, in the uh, the, uh, the uh, classic uh, story, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, this is by the way the hardest spell in normal mode, uh, Dragon Necklace. Um, yeah, so I uh, just bomb it if you can. Um, <clears throat> one of the things is uh, she comes up with, uh, well she ends up having a lot of suitors, and uh, she comes up with five impossible requests that anyone who wants to seek her hand in marriage must complete. And uh, that's what her spell cards are based on. Uh, the first one was a uh, dragon necklace, um, something that they had to retrieve, a uh, Buddhist stone bowl. Um, you know, a stone bowl used by Buddha, I guess. Uh, this one is doable-ish, but I tend to have problems with it. Um, I would say it's probably the second most doable of her spells, maybe? I don't know. Uh, this, I like to bomb this because it's just really scary. Uh, but the first wave is, you're totally safe, everything <laughs> runs away from you. Uh, but then you start getting bombarded. You just have to keep in mind that those bubble bullets uh, have much smaller hitboxes than their sprites, so you are safer than you look with them. Uh, this is her lone spell that I can fairly regularly capture. Um, I put my capture rate up in the corner is not that good. That's because I played this a lot before um, I knew what I was doing. But now that I know how to do this, I want, now that I've learned how to restrain this and recognize that this is just simple streaming. Um, it's pretty doable. Uh, this is the first Toho game that I won CC, mostly because they give you the option of starting with seven lives. Um, and a lot of people find this to be the easiest Toho game, I think, although I'm much better at Perfect Cherry Blossom. Uh, I, I find this harder, but some people find it easier. Uh, let's see. One thing that's really tricky about this game is the last word system. Basically the death bomb system. Where it's easy to become too reliant on death bombs and not bomb proactively enough. And that's a problem because, uh, you use two bombs instead of one when you still use your last word. Uh, this spell I'm horrible at, so I'm just gonna bomb through it. It's really weird. I went through this in spell practice once and learned how to do it and got to where I could capture it on a, not a regular basis, but I had a decent shot at it and I now can't do it anymore. And uh, this is her final spell. It's actually fairly doable. Um, the beginning is really easy on normal mode. It gets harder on harder modes. Um, make sure that you start off with your human character as much as possible because you see that wall of uh, familiars there that's spawning bullets? You want to shoot those down while you can, because you can destroy some of them by the end of the fight, which means fewer bullets coming out at the end when things get crazy. And it also means that you're being blocked from hitting Kaguya, but that doesn't matter because she's invincible for the first like 40 seconds of the fight or something. So we only recently started damaging her. So um. There's no reason to penetrate her familiars before that. Um, now you want to use the uh, yokai character so you can deal as much damage as possible to Kaguya as quickly as possible. And, and then it's not that bad once you, if you kill some of the familiars. Um, yeah, so one bomb, one death bomb there. Uh, we froze the night. Yeah, she's just figured it out, and, uh, she's gonna give us everything she's got. So, Kagi actually has five last words. And you basically... This is one 
this is why basically you want to uh, try and hit your time uh, your time goals for the game even if you're going to final B because even though you can't continue once you get to the final spells you basically are allowed to try them until you hit five once you hit five she stops even if you haven't finished all five um this one is very hard for me I have trouble reading these uh, crossing patterns for openings um but uh, you lose um, a half hour at least if you fail the spell. If you fail it um, particularly early, you'll lose an hour or maybe even an hour and a half. Like there, I lost an hour because I failed right at the beginning. I'm horrible at that one too. Um, this one, let's see. Start over in the corner and you're safe. Uh, and then just kind of try and read the openings ahead of time and get to an opening and uh, just stay ahead of those red balls and just keep moving to the openings and uh, hope don't go too fast but um, you have just enough space uh, and then we get to our last spell which I fail miserably oh jeez yeah this part isn't this is not the hard part and I just walked right into that yeah but uh, if you can finish off the spells before getting to 5 o'clock, you get a pretty sizable bonus. Um, see, night bonus of uh, 2, I, mean, I don't know, 20 minutes, I don't know. I couldn't count the zeros fast enough. But uh, yeah, you get, if you hit, uh, if you hit 5 o'clock, uh, basically you don't get that night bonus. Um, so you want to try and get through them if you can. Uh, usually I don't, but that time I actually did. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry about losing the live commentary there. Um, I guess next time I'll try to take on extra. I actually tried to record extra, but uh, it was lagging horribly. So I don't know if I can get away with recording it. Um, it, it might just be extra has too many bullets to run the game and the recording software, so if that's the case, I might just record a replay. Um, maybe I'll record this replay, this, even though this is from a while ago. And not probably not a particularly good clear, but I will try again to get a live clear of that. Um, hopefully that will work out, uh, but if not, I'll, I'll at least get you a replay of extra. Uh, so I will see you guys then.